Good, good afternoon. Welcome to Never Alone Singles Ministry. Today, we're going to um, be introducing our new um, group. We are going to uh, start with prayer and then we will um, dig into the Word of God today. A few um, little bit more information about what today's um snog group facebook live stream is going to be about is you're going to hear my testimony and also you're going to hear um a lesson about um what the the title of the lesson if you didn't see it when I posted it a few days ago is flying solo but before we get to that part let's play and then um I will tell you a little bit more about this ministry Holy Father I am I ask you to come I ask your Holy Spirit to meet us here. Lord Jesus, as we kick off this new ministry, and today's the, the start of it, Father God. Lord, you know I'm being obedient to you and starting this ministry, which you have placed upon my heart, Lord, never alone singles ministry. I ask you, Lord, that you have your way in it, that your will be done that you will be accomplished so that, Lord, you will be glorified. You will be honored. You will be praised. Draw people closer to you today. Store hearts, Father God. Nourish hearts through your holy word, Father God, that people will get on their knees and surrender their lives to you and become saved and that they will also Look to you for wisdom. Look to you for guidance and that they will lean upon the Lord for strength, Father God. That they will lean upon you for wisdom. That they will lean upon you to be their pillar of strength when they are weak and when they don't know how they will go on and when they feel all alone. Because with you, God, we are never alone because you are always with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Um, for those of you who haven't attended my uh, Bible study that I do on Tuesdays, uh, over at Coffee with the One True King, um, my name is Sarah Godwell, and I, for those who don't know me, I have silver palsy. You're going to hear my testimony now. Um, if you look in your Bible, we're going to look in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 says and when you pray do not keep on babbling. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. 
for they think they will be hard because of the many wards. That was the NIV version. If you're reading from New King James Version, it says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. How many of you have ever heard a Christian single Matthew West? He released um, a song called Walking Miracles. Verse 1 says, let me tell you about William. He's been fighting battles since day one. The doctor said his life was over a year before it had begun. They said he never walked, but now he walks. They said he never talked, but now he talks. I guess you could say, I guess you could say, he's a living, breathing, walking miracle. The chorus says, oh, they're all around us everywhere we go. The proof that we should never give up hope. Because we saw the God who turns impossible into living, breathing, walking miracles. If you look at the book of Job, yes, it's pronounced Job, not Job. If you look at the book of Job 29 verse 15, the New Living, the New Living Translation says, I saw this eyes for the blind and feet for the lame. The New International Version says Verse 15, chapter 29, says, I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I like to uh, compare translations so that people can see the little bit of difference, even in a word or two, can uh, sometimes help you understand it better. People understand different um, translations, the context, better than they do, for instance, King James Version. Um, nothing wrong with King James Version. You can read any version you'd like. Um, but just some people understand the different versions better than they do others, is all I'm saying. You can conquer any obstacle in your life serving Jesus. Speaking of that, my life began differently than many others 32 years ago. My parents asked God for another child. I have an older brother named Chris who prayed for a sister. Talking about the faith of a child at the age of four, my mom became pregnant. My dad was in the Air Force and they were stationed over in Germany. The Lord said, you're going to have twin daughters. We were supposed to be her Christmas babies on December 15th, but God had a different plan. My family was so excited. Chris, who turned five later that summer, couldn't wait to have two sisters. Mom's pregnancy was going well until the 25 week mark, five and a half months. She developed preeclampsia, which is high blood pressure, and twin to twin transfusion syndrome a real condition where identical twins share a placenta. My mom was admitted to a German hospital because she started going into premature labor. Her body thought she was full-term. 
They stopped the label numerous times. But three weeks later, the day arrived where the medicine no longer worked. The morning of September 15th, she had an emergency C-section and we made our debuts. Twin B, Leah, was born first. Twin A, that's me, a minute later, was born second. Leah weighed one pound, zero ounces. I weighed one pound, 12 ounces. Unfortunately, Leah didn't survive and passed away two hours after birth. I know without a doubt she is in heaven with Jesus and I will meet her in the future when he calls me home. Doctors told my parents my chance of surviving through the night was slim. And every day after that, they heard, don't, give you, don't get your hopes up. Upon my arrival in the neonatal intensive care unit, NICU, I was placed on a ventilator because I couldn't breathe on my own due to my lungs not being fully developed. I was on the ventilator for about a month until I was able to breathe on my own, which caused my silver palsy. I had eye surgery at three months, at three months old. They froze the blood vessels in my eyes to keep me from going blind. Four months after birth, my parents brought me home on a heart monitor, which I wore daily for a year. Now the thing about a heart monitor was they had to carry around this, this heart monitor inside a bag everywhere they went. They had a cord that went from the heart monitor to my chest. And um, I wore that for the first year of my life. Along the way, they noticed that there were some de developmental delays. I was laughing and smiling like a normal baby, but I wasn't sitting up, crawling, or trying to walk like other children my age were. Almost two years later, my parents requested to return to the United States. They knew I was going to need services, but they didn't know exactly what type. I hadn't been diagnosed at that time. I went to several doctors and specialists. At the age of three, my parents finally received a medical diagnosis. She has cerebral palsy, CP, and is a quadriplegic. I was not born with cerebral palsy, CP. Mine was caused by my brain hemorrhaging after birth from being on the ventilator for a month. It affects my mobility and muscle tone. All four of my limbs are involved, particularly my whole right side. Doctors told my parents I would never walk or talk. However, the ultimate physician, the ultimate physician had other plans and just goes to show that God can use anyone to solve his kingdom. Second Samuel 4 verse 4. If you have your Bibles, you can turn them there. It's in the Old Testament. Second Samuel 4 verse 4 says, Jonathan, son of Saul, had a son who was lame in both feet. He was five years old when the news 
about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. His nurse picked him up and fled, but as she hurried to leave, he fell and became crippled. His name was Mephibosheth. An unknown author says, God isn't in love with a future you. He loves you as you are, where you are. What is it like having cerebral palsy? I'm going to paint this visual for you to imagine. Growing up, stool was a struggle for me due to my chronic fatigue. Yes, I still have chronic fatigue. I always learned differently versus someone without special needs. When I graduated high school in 2009, my brother walked me across the stage where I received my regular diploma. I didn't want to use my power wheelchair or my walker that evening. So I asked Chris to walk me. He said I would be honored to do that, Sarah. My staticity is my advantage, which gives me the ability to walk. I have tight heel cords and hamstrings, which is why I walk on my tippy toes at times. Jesus Christ has given me a good life. You ask, how can you say that due to having cerebral palsy CP? My response, I am blessed beyond measure by God. He can use even people like me for his glory. Jesus, Jesus gives everyone unique individual gifts and talents. It takes swallowing your pride to say, I am grateful for the life he has given me. I use a walker inside and for short distances. If I'm around a crowd of people and going a long distance, like shopping or church, then I use my power wheelchair. An unknown author says, having a child with cerebral palsy is like taking the scenic well. You still get where you are going. It may take a little longer, but it will, but it will be well worth the trip. I love that quote. People with special needs long to be accepted. I remember growing up trying to keep up with my older brother, Chris, and do everything he did. One of the many things that my cerebral palsy CP prevented me from was playing basketball with him. Since I couldn't win the hoop standing up, he lowered the height of his basketball goal. Afterward, it was shorter so I could wing it while sitting in a chair. I remember being ecstatic the first time that the ball went in the hoop. It's humbling to see the Lord's individual plan for our lives unfold. Keep moving forward with Christ. Remember, we're the apple of his eye. An unknown author says, everything that God allows to come our way is always with a purpose. Is always with a purpose. He uses even the greatest error and deepest pain to mold us into a better person. Have you given the Lord your word that you will serve him for the rest of your life? Christians make promises to their Heavenly Father every day. Then the storms come, they fall short, and sometimes wind up 
and sometimes wind up turning their backs on him, which is a mistake. None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. And fortunately enough, his grace steps in daily. Anonymous says, whatever it costs, the gospel is worth it. We serve a God who is limitless. After all, Jesus made us in his image. Now you have heard my testimony. The next thing in today's, um, in today's Bible study is our lesson titled, Flying Solo. Most people think when you're flying solo that you're all by yourself. But you have a pilot named God. You are the co-pilot. Anonymous says, Surely God listens, understands, and knows the hopes and fears you keep in your heart. For when you trust in his love, miracles happen. How many of you like to fly? I've done it a few times, but it's not my thing. Sometimes when you're on a plane, you experience turbulence. It's when the plane starts shaking. I remember when I was 22. I took my first flight in the winter time. The only other time that I had flown was back to the States from Germany when I was an infant. I had no memory of it. Years prior to that, I saw movies about flying. The plane we were on started shaking 10 years ago. I remember my anxiety started rising on the inside. Now on the outside, I looked cool as a cucumber. My family didn't know that I was anxious because I just sat there silently. I was so happy when we landed. If you have your Bible, we're going to look at Proverbs 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. And you may have heard other translations say it. Other translations say it like this. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. We are called to be obedient to God even in our singleness. Have you ever submitted your plans and dreams to our Savior? He's longing for you to tell him you're wide open to thy will in your life. Thy will means his will. Thy means his. Jesus has a future promise for you far greater than your imagination. He will unveil it on his ultimate timeline. We're going to look at Ecclesiastes verse chapter 3 verse 11. Ecclesiastes 3.11 We're still in the Old Testament. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 says, 
He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Remember, it's out of our hands. God sits on the heavenly throne. His heavenly throne. Obey him. Your reward from the Lord will be your reward from the Lord will be worth the wait. Second Timothy three verses sixteen to seventeen in the New Testament says this. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. How many of you have that scripture memorized and you are able to quote it as I was reading it? An unknown author says, The Bible is not about us. We are not the focus. It is not all blood that runs like a stalwart thread through the pages of the Holy Spirit and styled words. The Bible is about Jesus. My dad served in the Air Force for 20 years. The military had a saying, If Uncle Sam wanted you to have a spouse, we would have issued you one. First Corinthians 10.31 NIV says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Are you submitting your plans to the Lord? Our Abba Father knows his children completely. He supplies everyone's needs before they are even able to request anything. Our Savior would prefer us to not waste his resources. Sometimes it may feel as if your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. Christ hears the longings of his children's hearts. He has the perfect timing in store when he's going to answer our petitions, keep sticking to him. The Lord doesn't ever grow tired of hearing from his sons and daughters. He delights in us more than we could ever fathom. Jude 1 verse 3, New Living Translation says, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you, about this about the salvation we share <coughs> excuse me i felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once entrusted to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to god's holy people i'll start that over jude 1 Verse 3, New Living Translation says, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. The past several years, I have not been able to get the phrase, Dear God, off my mind. The Holy Spirit kept on telling me I was supposed to do something with those words, but at that time, I wasn't sure what. <coughs> it was 14 years ago that I had that, um, those two words on my mind. Then one day, he told me what a devotional about it. So I did. And then when I was preparing this lesson, or first lesson, in Neville Lone Singles Ministry, 
um, he told me, use it again. Use those two boards again, dear God, in your lesson. If we are not putting the good news of the gospel, then what are we doing? We live in a board that is broken, but Christ can mend it and make it whole. God's got this. He is waiting forever in our hearts because we belong to him. Believers are imperfect and saved by the grace of God. Everyone should fall in love with the Lord. His, let his love make you stronger in your daily walk with Christ. How many people remember the WWJD, What Would Jesus Do bracelets? I had a few of them along with many others in the early 2000s. People would walk around and counter a situation and say, What would Jesus do? The King of Kings provided daily wisdom for every problem we face and still does today. You can stand against all of your giants with the Savior. He knows us through and through. Is Jesus your inspiration in everyday life? As his followers, we're supposed to display God's traits. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You'll find that in Galatians 5, verse 22. Many Christians receive wisdom from the Lord and follow his instructions. His living water will flow through us. Stand on the biblical truth in our Savior's holy word and pray it throughout the world. Psalm 23, 6, the message translation says, Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Lisa Torkos says, God loves me too much to answer my prayers at any other time than the right time and in any other way than the right way. <coughs> Place your heart in the hands of Jesus today. He holds it and he has the best in store for you. One day, you will see why you had to endure the season of singleness. It may not be easy. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember that God is in charge of your love story. He writes the best ones. Trust and allow the one who handcrafted your heart to read it to you. Pray fervently. And your Heavenly Father will give you the desires of your heart. One day, you will look back when you meet them face to face. You will say these words. They were worth the wait. You were worth the wait. The Lord knew what I needed all along. Salvation is like a box of chocolates. You get eternal life, healing, provision, and the list keeps going. God gave you his heart through his son Jesus. Now it's time to give him yours by letting him in. I'm going to share with you the prayer of salvation. I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to accept Christ as their personal Savior. Repeat these words out loud, silently, or even whisper it. God knows, God heals. He heals um, the whispers. He heals the audible prayers. He even heals the silent prayers in our hearts. He knows our thoughts. Because he is 
omniscient, which means all-knowing. <clears throat> Let us pray. Holy Father, if there's one person here that does not know you, I ask you, Lord, to save their souls today. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. If you would like to receive Christ as your personal Savior, then now is the time to pray this prayer. Repeat it after me. Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner in need of a... I admit that I'm a sinner, Lord, in need of a Savior. Please come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I repent of all my sins. Lord, you're knocking on the door of my heart. I open the door wide open to you and say, come in. Make your home inside of me where you may reign and dwell and live forever and ever, for all eternity. Lord, you're looking for people like me who will accept you, who will say yes to Jesus today. I'm a white heel right now saying yes to you. Lord, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. And your word says if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Well, God, you died on the cross. You sent your son Jesus to die on the cross 2,000 years ago for our sins, for my sins, to where we could receive mercy and grace and forgiveness and have them washed away and thrown into the sea of forgetfulness forevermore. Because your word says, though your sins are red like crimson, I will make them white as snow. Lord, even though our sins are white like snow, right? you made them white as snow. We thank you for that. We praise you for that. We're thankful for your forgiveness and mercy so that we can be reconciled with Christ. Lord, I believe that Jesus died on that cross and three days later, he rose from the grave, he ascended into heaven and he's seated right now at the right hand of God the Father where he's been for the last 2,000 years. He's making intercession for his daughters and sons worldwide so that they may be, be saved, so that they may become new creations, so that they may say yes to Jesus, take up the cross and follow him, so that they may go out and share the good news, shine the light for Christ and not hide it under a bushel, so that people will see the bright light shining and say, what's so different about you? You have this glow. You have this shine. And you're so happy that we want to experience that joy that you have. Please, God. We want that honey flowing out of that rock. Which flows from your heart to ours on earth and gives us peace, gives us love, gives us joy, gives us the sweetness of your Holy Spirit. Please, God. Store hearts so that more people will get saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today and making me a new creation. Thank you, God, for letting people rededicate their lives to you today and get off the, the unrighteous path and get on the righteous one, the righteous one which leads to life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving souls and letting people surrender their lives to you 
In Jesus name amen. If you just played that prayer. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome. We celebrate with you. If you just played that prayer. Click the message button. Message me. Let me know that you made that decision to accept Christ and say yes to Jesus today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for he is worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory. If you enjoyed today's lesson, click the share button. Share it on your uh, profiles so that other people may hear about the word of God so that they may be encouraged in their season of singleness and that they can draw closer to the Lord. We are also on YouTube. Our channel is Never Alone Singles Ministry. Just like our Facebook group. And you can subscribe to that today. I'll post the link in the comment section. And I'll also share it on the group. For those who may not have seen it um, in the past week and a half. Um, also, if you ever need prayer, we have a Jesus or Intercessor prayer ministry on Facebook. You can go and click a join today and uh, we will pray for you about anything. If you like today's lesson, and you want to hear more about God's word, come join us tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central, Central Time, Central Time, and over at Coffee with the One True King, we will be um, having a Bible study lesson about faith the size of a mustard seed. That'll be part two. The title of our lesson is, I have a mustard seed and I'm not afraid to use it. If you want to hear more about faith, then we will gladly have you um, come be a part of our Facebook live stream tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central. Also, um, a little more about this new ministry. We will be meeting once a month here on Facebook live stream. And then after the live stream is finished, I will post it to the YouTube channel. Um, that way people who are not on Facebook, who do not have Facebook, can go to YouTube and watch it. I do the same thing with my Coffee with the One True, with the One True King um, lessons every week. That way, they'll reach more people. Invite someone. Invite someone to never alone singles ministry so that they may um heal the ward once a month maybe they're not a part of a, a a church community and they're looking to hear the gospel they're looking to get involved in um a singles ministry where they can heal the word of god where they can be encouraged, where they can be prayed for. Well, this is the one for them to join. We will gladly have them. See, for years, I, every church I've been at, I was looking for one thing besides hearing the word of God. I was looking for a single ministry. Everyone I've been at, they didn't have one. Well, God said, start your own. I said, what? He said, you heard me. Start your own. I said, that's a great idea. Well, then I had to, come, I had to ask the Lord, what do I call it? And he said, never alone, singles ministry. Because with Christ, you're never alone because he is always, always with you. You'll find that in his word. I am always with you from the beginning of time until the end. 
His word says, I am with, always with you from the until the end of the age. And the end of the age is whether he um, comes in the watcher first or if we meet him in heaven first after our death. That's what end of the age means for those who don't know. See, one day we're going to hear that trumpet sound. And Christ is going to descend from heaven and come on earth and take us Christians back home with him. What a glorious day that will be when we are walking in the streets of God alongside our Lord and Savior. Our next um, singles ministry uh, live stream is going to be at the end of March. It's in the if you go to the events tab in the group, you will um see the date there. The dates listed. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's if I'm not mistaken. I think it's March 29th, 30th, it's on a Wednesday, whatever the last Wednesday of March is, um, come and join us then, it will be at the same time as today, 1pm Central. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, sometimes we, are, we do not start on the dock. Because sometimes I want late at getting started. I don't mean to. It just happens. So I'm just telling, I'm just telling you that our once a month um, meetings will not be um, exactly at 1 o'clock on the dot. It may be 105. Just letting you know. So. If you hop on and, and you say, well, where is she? She said one o'clock. I won late. Just letting you know. So, um, hope y'all are having a great, fantastic, marvelous Monday. Have a blessed week, and I will see those of you who are in Coffee with the One True King. I will see y'all tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Um... Everyone else, I will see y'all in four weeks, in a month, um, at the end of March. Stay safe and God bless. Bye.